For years, London has been the go-to city for GCC property investors, but that appears to be changing. So where is the smart money going now? You're watching Inside AB. My name is Jeremy Lawrence, and I'm joined here by Eddie Taylor. Eddie, we've been known to discuss all things property in our, in our time, so uh, this is a good one for us. Uh, do you want to just tell you about London? The average house price rocketed nearly 500% from 1998 to 2018. Astonishing. And of course, that's where all the GCC money was going. But that has changed. So let's summarise that before we move on to where the money's now moving. Well, the thing with London is it's always been, as you say, it's been a very, very popular destination for any kind of international mm -hmm. global property investor. But particularly from the GCC, according to JLL, uh, it was the number one destination for GCC property mm. money yeah. outside, of, outside of the region. So it's always been this kind of magnet for GCC money. But that's kind of slightly changing now as the environment is changing. We all know that London basically was, you know, it went through an incredible exponential property boom in the last yeah. 10, 12 years. Prices were really, really climbing. It, people were being priced out. And that affects things like yield. So therefore, whatever rental income you're going to get for your property, you know, where it should be in the 5, 6, 7% for inter institutional investors, that's now dropping down to kind of under 3%. So mm -hmm. it's just less attractive and the stamp duty that came in, you know, so the threshold and the barrier to entry for London now are just much higher than they've been for, for, for a long time. Right. And bloated top end as well. I've got here the top 11 of London's 33 boroughs are down an average of 7% 7, 7 sorry, in 2017, whereas the 11 cheapest boroughs are down 1.3%. So you can see that there was a bubble at the top end. Yeah, there. there's even some talk of somewhere like Westminster where prices are actually down 20% in the last 18 months. So wow. a real kind of, in that central London area, real, real falls. All right. So let's talk about where the investors are looking now. First of all, with the Northern Powerhouse. Well, the Northern Powerhouse is so called Northern Power. I'm not sure whether it's kind of tongue in cheek or not, where people are referring to it. But this was kind of a plan from the, the then Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, to turn the cities of the former industrial giants of Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds and Sheffield into this kind of new regeneration hub that can kind of take a lot of the strain off London in terms of employment and things like that. So um, Manchester has been the big buy-to-let property investment story of the last three or four years. And just looking at some stats now, you've got £1.3 billion uh, airport upgrade. You've got the relocation of the BBC moved up there. You've got certain government departments moving up there now. So there's a lot of um, demand on city centre property in Manchester yeah. that the buy-to-let investors and developers have been really looking to exploit. So there's a lot of uh, buy-to-let activity in Manchester there. Um, and I think it's actually, after London, I think it's the, the, the most popular destination now for the region's property investment in the UK. So yeah. that shows it's been climbing the rankings, if you like, of of, of buy-to-let hotspots in the UK. But that's not the only story. I mean, Liverpool has been going through a massive regeneration Which of its own. Which is next door, we should say. Just quite about 45 minutes, isn't it? Something like that on the train. Less than that. I Less think. than that. Um, you know, a, a, a big northern industrial powerhouse in, in days of yore, but it kind of like fell on hard times a little bit. But now it's, you know, again, being subject to massive generation. Big university city as well, we shouldn't forget that. Both Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester, lots of students coming into these places. And that's been enjoying huge multi-billion dollar investment, regeneration of its old kind of, you know, dockside areas and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, you also have Leeds, of course, your favourite. My favourite, yes. Um, uh, my stamping ground. I mean, Leeds is a very, very interesting city. It's, I think maybe in 2015 and 2016, it was considered the fastest growing city in Europe in terms mm. of its economy. 10% growth in 2017. 10% growth in 2017 in terms of its property market. The interesting thing is there just isn't the supply. Mm. So whereas Manchester and Liverpool are building and building and building, uh, something like Leeds needs 90,000 new city centre units by 2025 and there's only 60,000 in the pipeline. So you're guaranteed that if you buy something in city centre Leeds, it will get rented out and you'll get rented out at yields of around about six, six and a half percent, which is really attractive for uh, property investors. Okay, just before we press on with different areas, uh, Sheffield, which is my hometown, best yields in the country at 12.1%. 
That's an interesting find one. slightly hard to believe. Well, I wonder with that is what kind of, you know, when you talk about yield, it's obviously, you know, you're, it's you're, theoretical, isn't it? It's the purchase price versus what you can get on the rental yeah. thing. So that might take into account slightly kind of subprime properties, you know, exactly. former kind of terraced houses, Victorian terraces that you can buy very, very cheap. So I would say that the average yield probably doesn't paint a particularly accurate picture. And for investors from the GCC, they'd be much more looking at uh, purpose-built new city centre mm. prime apartments, and the yields there they're going to be falling to around about six seven percent. Still us, good, still yeah. good, but not at that. That twelve percent is a bit misleading, I'd say. Yeah, which brings us very briefly to Birmingham. This is one of the big buy-to-let stories. Like where Manchester was three or four years ago, Birmingham is now, and that's basically because it's only an hour and a half from London on the train. Less probably a bit that. less, probably a bit less than that now. Um, massive investment that's gone into the middle and and big companies are now moving their bases away from London into Birmingham. That includes HSBC have moved their entire retail arm now to the city centre of Birmingham. KPMG have moved big offices there. And there's something like 420,000 square foot of office space has now come onto the market in Birmingham, which means that there's going to be a huge amount of life being breathed into the city centre there. Mm, okay. Before we move on to Europe, just want to throw it out there to you viewers, where you think is a good bet for property. Is it still London? Are there other areas you're looking at? Please do um, add your thoughts below. Back to you though, Eddie. Germany's been performing really strongly in the last 18 months. Well, the whole German economy is in a good position and low unemployment is meaning, you know, that there's, again, there's a big demand for city centre properties. You've got the Brexit effect, of course. So cities like Frankfurt, which is probably the second financial hub outside of London in Europe, is now expecting between 3,000 and 5,000 jobs to be created as big financial institutions leave London and move to Frankfurt. So that's a really, really big story. But probably the biggest story is Berlin. And this is the property hotspot of Europe as a whole, I would say, right now. Mm. So what you have with Berlin, obviously for the best part of 70 years, it wasn't a global city. It was stuck behind the Iron Curtain. There was stagnation. There wasn't a great deal of investment. It wasn't able to participate in the global economy. So prices for the last five or six years have made incredibly cheap. So the value has really been there. And now it's becoming a real uh, tech and startup hub. So a lot of businesses are moving in, a lot of people moving in, and you can get really, really strong growth, probably better growth in real estate in Berlin than certainly any city, comparable city in Europe right mm. now. Mm. Shame I didn't buy that apartment in the city centre I was going to 12 years ago. You didn't You didn't get that one? I didn't do it. We've all got stories like that. Yeah. I could talk about I, I bought and sold a flat in London. I mean, I, could, I wouldn't be sitting here now if I had kept hold of that. <laughs> Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh, briefly, elsewhere in Europe, Lisbon. That's, that's a good go-to city. Portugal well. is a good story generally. I think with low tax environment, there's a lot of economic um, uh, activity going on in Portugal there. I think we've got some stats there. Prices increased 21.1% year on year and have doubled since 2013. That was City so, centre in Lisbon. City centre in Lisbon. So again, you talk about Berlin. If you'd have bought in Lisbon only five years ago, you'd have made a, a pretty decent return on whatever investment you made. Mm. Let's cross the Atlantic briefly to the US. Um, I mean, the US traditionally has always been about New York, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it like, it's a bit like London. It's always been the magnet for international property investment simply because of the returns, because of the demand. Manhattan itself is a very small island and there's, you know, there's a real pressure on supply there. Yeah. Um, but again, the tax environment, the cost has just meant that people are looking elsewhere for better value. Mm -hmm. And it seems they're moving to uh, the West Coast. So they're looking at places like Seattle, which again is... Um, a, a, a sort of a tech area, yeah, thriving, a thriving area. You've got places like, you know, you've got the, the, the headquarters of Nike just down the road in Beaverton. So there's a lot of um, uh, ac economic activity over there. And then you've got Chicago, which is probably after New York, America's main financial center, but the values of property there, are, you know, they cost much less. Uh, the barriers to entry aren't there in quite the same way, but you'll be able to get really, really strong returns and good yield. Mm. Right. Let's just finally wrap this up by talking about the distinction between the GCC investors wanting properties for status or for emotional reasons and those that are wanting a return on the investment. Yeah, when you talk to the property investor, the likes of, you know, Knight Frank and IP Global, they very much segment their type of investor. So you have uh, probably the, um, the retail investor, I would call it, people are wanting to get better returns for their investment. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at property really as a, just a separate asset class. There's something yeah. they're not even going to see. They're not even set foot in these properties. And everything they're buying is purely about the numbers. What's the price? 
what's the yield, what's the growth curve. Mm. I mean, and that's that's where your Manchester's and your Leeds and your Birmingham and your satellite towns out around London. Yeah. That's where these kind of considerations are really. Or your kind Chicago's. Of, or your Chicago's. That's where these considerations are really the prime. Mm. But then you've got probably the more local investors. So you've got Emiratis and Saudis and Kuwaitis and Bahrainis. They're probably going to stay to the prime cities, your Sydneys, your Hong Kongs, your Londons, your New Yorks. And in somewhere like London, they're probably legacy family buys. So they might go into somewhere like a Mayfair and a Belgravia because they've got either children in education there and they yes, want to buy a home. It becomes an emotional investment. And once they buy it, they simply will not sell it. Mm. So that's when you kind of your six, seven, eight, nine million pounds for a townhouse mm. and a decent area. That's the kind of purchases that these people will be making. Mm. So that's when you are getting on a plane to go and look at it because it's not simply about numbers. This is about understanding the value of that property. It's, it's useful in the short term, so it's a useful tool for you. But then again, it's going to have kind of you know generational importance for mm. your portfolio. Worse places to live than Knightsbridge as well. Oh, well, I imagine so. I mean, you know, well, we're from the north, so London, it doesn't hold any appeal to us. Give me, give me a nice two bedroom in Leeds city centre and I'll be happy. <laughs> All right, I'll have the one in Knightsbridge. Uh, thank you, Eddie Taylor. You've been watching Inside AB. As I said earlier, please do let us know what you think. Where do you think GCC investors should be placing their money? Um, as ever, comment, subscribe, share, and we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m.